Hi there, this is Tim Weir and I'm doing what we call an over the shoulder video. Simply means you get to kind of look over my shoulder as I do some work and, and uh, you'll be able to, to learn a couple of things from it. Uh, today's particular topic is about taking scroll saw patterns and turning them into something that you can use with your laser. So in, in essence what we want to do is turn the pattern into a vector uh, into vector graphics so that we can download it straight to the laser and let it run. You can see that I have Corel Draw uh, X4 going here and I think the process is pretty much the same in any version. Uh, you should also be able to do a similar process in uh, Adobe Illustrator and some other applications. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take one that is really really simple. It's just a simple JPEG that we want to turn into a um, a pattern that we can use. So first, I'm going to just create a new document, and I want to import the file. Now I have this setup is just showing me the JPEGs, and I happen to have one here that I found on the web. It's a just nice little wreath, and we're going to tell it to go ahead and bring it in. It says it's ready and all I got to do is tell it where I want it to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it here. Now you can see that we have this here. This actually comes from the scrollsawartist.com. It was a free pattern. They have several free ones there. So it's kind of it's kind of a nice place to go if you're looking for some to play with. What we want to do now is take this JPEG and turn it into something that's a little bit more convenient for us to use. It is selected now, and if I were to deselect it, you want to start by selecting it. And I just do a right click, and what we want to do is go to center line trace. And the particular mode that we want is line drawing. This usually works pretty well. So it's going to bring it up, and it's going to show on the left what our original is. And while it's, it was processing, now here it's showing you what is on the right. I'm going to tell it to not remove the background temporarily because it's a little bit easier to see. Eventually, or before we're done, I will tell it to remove it again. But if you want, you can scroll, you can zoom in on it just to see, you know, it's pretty decent quality. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to remove the background again. And we're going to say, OK. And now we have it. It is all one group. In fact, as you can see here, there are 37 objects to this group. And we don't really want that. Um, we'd, we'd like to get it down to, to something smaller than that. Ideally, get it down to a single curve. So the first thing I do is ungroup. And it shows me the 37 individual pieces. With them all still selected, there's a two-step process. The first is to simplify, and that just makes sure that we don't have double lines and or, you know lines that uh, um, the same line twice, you know, once on top of each other and the like. Do the simplify, and then I want to do a weld, and the weld simply puts all of this together. So we're going to weld it, and as you can see now, we have a single curve that is the entire object. If we want to see what it's going to actually look like when we were to cut it out, we can do so. We can fill it with black, and we can see what it looks like there. We could also look at it as um, a print preview. And in print preview, we can see where it is. It's off my page a little bit. I can move it and get it onto the page. It looks pretty good. But you know what? It's bigger than the default size that I have set up for my work area for a lot of these things. I work in millimeters a lot and my default size of the page is 200 millimeters by 150 or about 8 inches by 6 inches. And as you can see it's too big. Because it's now a vector I can simply take this and I can shrink it down and say I want it this size. And it works just fine. In fact if I say well yeah it looks nice but what if I made it more of an oval? I can do it that way. Now being an oval, I can fill up my space a little bit better. And again, if I wanted to see what it looks like or what it's going to look like when we're done, we go to the pr uh, print preview, and there it is. 
Now, basically, I'm ready to go. All I have to do at this point is tell it to go ahead and fire up uh, this in uh, the software for the DSP. And here we have the object. It is ready to cut. It's going to cut on all the black lines. I'm going to verify that I have it set for 3 millimeters per second and a power level of 60, corner power of 60, and that we are doing cutting rather than engraving. If I were to change it to engrave, we're just going to end up with obviously an engraving of it. We actually want it to cut, so I'm going to do a cut, say OK. And at this point, I could turn my laser on, do a download, and tell it to save the document. It won't save right now because I don't have the laser turned on. Uh, it would send it down, and then all we would have to do is tell it to start, and it would put it out. So this was a very, very simple case. Uh, it was a very good graphic. It was a, a scroll saw pattern. You're going to find some that are a lot trickier to work with. And on the next video or on another video a little bit later on, we'll go into some techniques for doing that. And I think we'll do still a third one later on on how to take a portrait, any portrait that you have or any picture that you have, and turn it into a scroll saw pattern or, as uh, we're looking at it here, a laser saw pattern. So that's it for this over-the-shoulder video. If you have any questions, you can get a hold of me through the build log at buildlog.net. And uh, I'm T. Weir on buildlog.net. Thank you very much.